Ooh, a graph, beautiful. So let's take a look. A graph of the continuous function g, the derivative of function f, is shown above. So let's remember that this is graph of g or f prime. We have to keep this in mind. The function g is piecewise linear from 4, negative 5 to 3. So we have all of those lines from negative 5 all the way to 3. And from 3 to 6, we have a function, a quadratic function, from 3 to 6. And we can see that from 3 to 6, we have this parabola opening up. OK, what do we have to do? We have to find f of negative 5 given that f of 1 is 3. Well, we have the graph of f prime given to us. And if you're going backwards to the values of f, something you may think of is definite integration. Because what happens when you, when you integrate f prime from negative 5 to 1? When you integrate f prime from negative 5 to 1, we get f of 1 minus f of negative 5 by fundamental theorem of calculus. And of course, we know f of 1. And we, ha we have our f prime graph to us, which we can find area of. So we can find this definite integral, so that we should be able to find f of negative 5. So let's do so. We know. Let's evaluate this. Let's evaluate this integral. Integral from negative 5 to 1 of f prime of x dx is from negative 5 to 1 from negative 5 to 1. So we're finding the area from negative 5 to 1. And of course, you have to count this area with quotation mark as negative, And you have to count this area as positive. So make sh let's make sure we do so. So to begin with, this, this shaded part from negative 5 to negative 1, well, you can use trapezoid. One way is to use the area formula for trapezoid. Or one way is to break it down into a rectangle and a triangle. You should get the same thing. If you use the formula for trapezoid, you have length of 4, length of 3, and height of 2. Height of 3, I meant to say. So you should have 4 plus 3, or 7, times 3 over 2, or 21 over 2 for this trapezoid. So you know that's 21 over 2. And what about this triangle? Well, that's simply 1 times 2 over 2, or 1. So we know this integral is negative of this, because you're going below. So negative 21 over 2 plus 1, or negative 19 over 2. So we know, we know negative 19 over 2, that's negative 19 over 2, is f of 1, which is 3, minus f of negative 5. And of course, using this, we can find f of negative 5 as 3 plus 19 over 2, or 25 over 2. So that's the answer to the first part. Let's go on. B, evaluate integral from 1 to 6 of g of x dx. That's pretty straightforward. We want to integrate it from 1 all the way, all the way to 6 all the way to 6. Well, from 1 to 3, you have this square with side length 2. So the area of that is obviously 4. So we know that's 4 plus, we have to integrate it from 3 to all the way to 6. This parabola, this quadratic function, and we have the equation for that. So we know from 3 to 6, our, our g is going to be 2 times x minus 4 squared dx. And you can integrate this pretty easily. Let me just take 2 out. So 2, and integrating x minus 4 squared, we get x minus 4 cubed over 3. Let me just kick 3 out 2. And you're going from 3 to 6. So you have 4 plus 2 thirds times. When you plug 6 into it, you get 2 cubed or 8. When you plug 3 into it, you get negative 1 cubed or negative 1. So 8 minus negative 1 or simply 8 plus 1. So you have 8 plus 1. So what do you have? You have 4 plus 18 over 3, or 4 plus 6, also known as 10. So the answer to part B is 10. So let's go on to part C. For x between negative 5 and 6, on what intervals, if any, is the graph of f both increasing and concave up? Well, if f is increasing, that means our g, which is f prime, our g has to be positive. And for f to be concave up, our g has to be increasing. This is just from the definition and how f and f prime relate. So from this, we want to find the open interval where g is positive and increasing. Well, 
G is positive from 0 to 6, and G is increasing from 0 to 1, and 4 to 6. So we have our answer from 0 to 1, and 4 to 6. Now let's go on to D. Find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of f. The point of inflection of graph of f is when f is changing from concave up to concave down or vice versa, also known as when f prime or g is going from increasing, increasing to decreasing or vice versa. And you cannot, as far as I know, you cannot go from increasing to constant to constant then decreasing, that's not allowed. It should be increasing to decreasing right away or decreasing to increasing right away. So where in our function g are we going from increasing to decreasing right away? Well, we're decreasing here and we're increasing to the right. So we have our value. We have our value of 4. And as you can see, we don't have any other values that correspond to it because at 1 you're going to constant, that's not allowed. At 3 you're going from constant to negative, constant you can have constant. So 4 is the only value where you're instantaneously going from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So that's x equals 2, 4.